what's up guys welcome back to the channel so we have a couple more things that we need to get done on this before we can put that body back on the frame now i still need to work on getting the cooling system all set up i think i'm actually going to have to order some stainless uh, two inch pipe and actually make a lower radiator tube uh, for it but that i'm going to do later so today actually i got with a drive shaft shop here locally uh, they gave me uh, ways of basically measuring what I what they need from me in order to make me some drive shafts. So today we're going to do the measurements on the drive shafts uh, and then also I'm going to show you all the wheels and tires. Now we're not going to be able to put them on yet but I'll go ahead and show you what I got uh, kind of the reasons behind what I got and everything. Uh, we'll talk to that a little bit. So let's get to it. Ooh, not yet. Sorry guys. We're gonna go over the drive shaft stuff first, then I'll show y'all the wheels and tires. Yeah, I covered it up so y'all couldn't peek whenever we're talking about these things. So these are the drive shafts I have currently. Now this one on the right over here actually came with the engine transmission whenever I got it. Uh, this was just stuck in a transfer case and kind of strapped over towards the transmission. Uh, the reason why I may be using portion of this is going to be for that slip yoke right there that's going to go into the front of our transfer case. Now these two right here are what came on the Humvee in the first place. Uh, the short one of course is the rear drive shaft and up here this is a two piece that goes up to the front diff. Now this long piece here is what comes from the transfer case, comes up, goes into another U-joint, uh, has a little slip joint there, and then has our carrier bearing and then goes up to our front diff that would be up there. So let's go ahead and start with the rear drive shaft and then we'll get to uh, some of the stuff on the front drive shaft. Now on our rear drive shaft, this is actually too long for our new transfer case uh, to actually go between our transfer case and our rear diff. We're going to actually have to get a uh, full custom one made for the back. Uh, also, we do not need a slip joint anymore on our rear drive shaft we do have a slip yoke that's going to go into the rear of the transfer case so let me go ahead and show y'all on the frame the transfer case and the rear end there uh, what we're going to be doing all right so now to the rear of our frame here we will have a slip yoke that goes in here i did not get a slip yoke whenever I ended up buying uh, the engine transmission transfer case package. So we are going to need a slip yoke for that, but that may be a good thing as well. Now, I bet you can kind of tell from the video here, there is not a whole lot of room between where this drive shaft's going to go and where the gas tank is here. It is concave there where the drive shaft's gonna go through there but bigger drive shafts going to have a little bit of issues with clearance between there. So on the rear end here and the original rear drive shaft, and I don't think this will be the same for all drive shafts and all Humvees, but I have 1330 series U-joints on the back back here. Now the front is completely different and had all 1310 series U-joints. And that's really going to be mostly what we need to know for the back portion here, uh, just for the back U-joint going into our diff. The front, I can pretty much run whatever you want. You just have to be careful with size because there is not a whole lot of space within here. Now, I believe the original slip yokes that came out of this transfer case were a 1410, um, and those are rather large. Now, the weak spot is probably going to be the U-joints in this. However, there is sometimes where you just cannot get all of the strength that you're gonna want on this. Now, why did GM use 1310 U-joints on the front and 1330 in the back whenever this is supposed to be a you know, hardcore off-road type thing that they're using out everywhere and you don't want things to break. Now, I don't think there will be quite as much issues with this being that our rear diff is a solid mount, our front diff is a solid mount, everything's solid mount. We have our independent uh, control arms on the side. Also inside our wheel well there, we do have the hubs and that is a two to one uh, reduction. So in doing so, I'm not sure, and I could be completely wrong on this, but that reduction in the wheels may actually help out up here in front with how much torque is going to be applied 
you know, directly to our U-joints there, compared to how much force is going to be needed to move these big tires and everything. Hopefully I'm not completely wrong on that, and y'all can let me know if you know better in the comments. So the plan is going to be to use a 1330 in the back back here, just so I don't need to replace anything back here. Um, also, limited space, you don't want to go too big. Now, a 1330 is actually the same size cap diameter as a 1310, and a 1350 is the same, basically, cross section from cap to cap, but it has bigger caps on the 1350 than the 1330. And what I'm thinking, but I need to talk to the drive shaft guy at the shop before really we decide on anything on this. I'm going to go ahead and take all the drive shafts I have in uh, and basically discuss what I'm doing with him on this. Just so everybody's on the same page, we get the best result out of this drive shaft that we can. I am hoping that we actually have enough room up here to run a 1350 to a 1350. And then from the drive shaft back, either run a 1350 to 1330. Uh, adapter kind of U-joint. Basically one, two sides are going to be a 1350 size cap, another side will be a 1330 size cap, or I may just have them go from a 1350 up front all the way back and then both on the back will be 1330s. Now when measuring for the drive shaft back here, you're going to want to measure from the seal to the midpoint basically where the cap is of the U-joint. So basically on this notice it'll be approximately where this flat surface is here on this. Now I went ahead and measured this with the help of somebody else just so I had everything steady. Now I will go ahead and measure this a couple more times just myself because I you know measure twice, cut once, all that stuff. But mainly I don't want to have to buy a whole nother drive shaft because I messed up measuring on that one. So I also went ahead and measured from the seal here to basically where this fuel tank kind of bulges back out. Hopefully we'll be able to get the U-joint up here ahead of this little bulge out in the fuel tank there. Uh, and that'll help us with some clearance as well because the shaft itself won't be as wide as that U-joint section will. On the front drive shaft, it's going to be easier for me to show you on the old drive shaft than it is on the transfer case or on the frame here, mainly because it kind of gets all tight up in there to really show you a whole lot. So one thing I will show you is on our engine mounts here, this is the driver's side engine mount, you do have these two holes right there and that's where your carrier bearing basically bolts into place and is on the opposite side so the drive shaft will run through there. All right, so now for our front drive shaft, I have done some research on this and a lot of people that are doing this type of swap actually only really need a custom rear drive shaft made. The front seems to be like it's actually the correct length, but my transfer case has a slip yoke into the front. Usually whenever you do drive shafts, you either want a slip yoke or a slip joint in it, and you don't usually want both. However, on our original front drive shaft, we do have a slip joint in here, basically where the carrier bearing is. So that's one thing that I'm going to need to discuss with my drive shaft guy, whether we're going to still be able to run a slip joint there, and have the slip yoke or if we're gonna have to look at a different setup. So I'm actually going to just go ahead and take this in as well to him. Hopefully that'll answer most of anybody's questions on the drive shafts here. Again, I'll know more once I talk to my drive shaft guy on exactly what's needed on this front. So I'll definitely give y'all an update on this later on. Just look for another drive shaft video after this one and I'll show you what we got on that. So now for what you all actually probably came here for, time for the wheels and tires. So we have Milestar Patagonia MT tires. These are 40 by 13 and a half R17s and they are wrapped around Method MR105s. Those are 17 by eight and a half. Now our Method wheels here do actually have uh, some positive offset. So they're actually kind of seated out, sucks the wheel and tire in a little bit. So I know the original Humvee wheels have a large backspacing offset, positive offset on them. 
Uh, so I wanted to go with a little bit of positive offset as well. I don't want these to stick super far out of the wheel wells. I do want a little bit of stick out on them, but not a whole lot. Yes, I do know that this actually can cause a little bit more wear on your ball joints. I will be getting new ball joints throughout this. And then also we're going to look at doing a better spindle lock inside our hubs there as well, but that'll be a later episode. And the thing to look for as well when you're looking for packages, wheels and tire packages is also load ratings. Uh, I did look at these load ratings. These are completely fine for the Humvee. Uh, I won't have any issues with the load rating on that and what the Humvee's load rating is. So I think everybody here probably also wants to see them up against the old tires so we get a reference on how much taller these are gonna be. And I say yes, let's do it. So it actually looks like quite a bit more difference than really it's going to be. Now the old wheels on here, or actually the old tires that are on here, were 37s now they are worn quite a bit so uh, they're probably closer to 35s if anything and our new tires here are 40s now no load is on these 40s yet and so you're probably going to lose maybe an inch there as well uh, so that type of gap right there is going to be a little bit less than that but it's going to be close to that and one of the main reasons that we're going to be able to use the 40s instead of 37s uh, is because we're actually gonna get more clearance whenever we do put the three inch body lift in here. Uh, we shouldn't have any issues. I've seen people actually run the 40s without the body lift, but they do have to do a little bit of clearancing on the hood and uh, a little bit kind of around the wheel well section. So I'm not going to put these on quite yet, mainly because putting them on now is just going to make putting the body back on even harder. Uh, we don't want that. It's already going to be hard enough. Also, I would like to actually keep the old wheels and tires on until I'm done painting the outside of the Humvee. That way, if any paint actually does drift over, I don't want it to get on the new wheels and tires. I actually was even thinking about possibly painting the beadlock section here uh, with the same color that we're going to be putting on the Humvee. So, I don't know, y'all let me know on that. Might do it, I may just leave them all blacked out like this, kind of like that blackout look with the uh, kind of grade eight hardware there. I'll definitely let y'all know once I get these on here and get everything rolling, how everything's working together. But that is going to be, I wouldn't say a lot further down the road, but that's going to be further down the road for sure. So y'all let me know what you think. I am excited about getting these things on there, but I actually have to kind of curb that excitement for a little while until I get further along on this build, mainly so I just don't mess them up before I actually get to really use them. I will be putting out another episode later on further whenever we get uh, some answers on the drive shafts here and everything. I'll get another episode out and let y'all know what we're doing on that. Thanks for watching guys. I hope y'all enjoyed this episode. If you did, please go ahead and hit that like button, subscribe, share, leave me a comment, and I'll see y'all next time. Ugh, wind's cold.